Hey everybody, welcome back to The Shaving Tolson. I'm your host, Tim Tillock, and today we are gonna be looking at some really fun equipment. This is gonna surprise a lot of you guys. Now, I was tagged in a video by Ken over at Shave326. It's the 11111 tag video, where basically you lay out your favorites in each category. One blade, one razor, one brush, one soap, one aftershave. At least that's how I'm doing it. Now, of course, I'm sure you could get into, you know, your favorite pre-shave. If, if you use a pre-shave, you get into your favorite bowls, you could get into all sorts of stuff. But for the sake of my video, I'm going to keep it nice, concise, <laughs> as much as possible, because we're going to be talking a little bit about some of these products. And some of them are going to surprise you, I promise you. And you're going to be like, okay, haven't heard about that in a while. But I'm going to talk about that here on today's video. So let's go ahead and get started. Without further ado, let's go ahead and wet the face. So I hope you guys are having a good weekend so far. If this reaches you on the weekend, if you don't see this on the weekend, then I hope this reaches you in good health whenever and wherever you are. But I think you guys liked the last video. I thought it was okay. I thought there could be improvements that were made. So I'm actually shooting with some different equipment tonight. And the idea of this setting, of kind of the darker setting and kind of what I'm wanting here is one of the things I've been striving for on the channel is kind of an ambience of just a place you can go to relax, watch a shaving video and have a good time. And that's the purpose of a lot of my videos is to just make it a place where you guys can come, have fun, engage, and see some cool stuff, hopefully, and hear some interesting opinions. And I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. If you guys aren't following the podcast, that's the worst shaving podcast ever. It's literally the name. Um, and you can find us on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, anywhere you would typically view a podcast, you're going to find our name on there. So what are my top choices? If I had to basically narrow it down to a set that I'd want to use on a daily basis, uh, what would I choose? And that was an incredibly hard decision. Whenever you're put <laughs> in a moment like that where you've got to kind of figure out, okay, what, what would be my go-to? Uh, what do I get the most satisfaction out of using? What's the most consistent? Uh, because I have razors that are excellent performers. I have razors at varying price points from a few bucks to incredibly expensive. Uh, same with soaps, same with aftershaves, everything. Um, and, you know, it's, it's weird because a lot of what I like, I found has come full circle into if I just chose stuff for myself without showing it on Instagram or wanting the sake of variety and, and a little bit of a different look for you guys each day, um, what would I just settle on for me? And so I started looking at my den. I started debating in my mind what I was going to choose. And some of them really it came down to the wire. But I'm going to show you guys what I chose and why I made these selections. So first things first, let's start off with the razor because I feel like that's one of the most important. And right here, some of you guys already recognize it, you know what it is. It's the Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements Prismatic. Uh, this was the first razor that I ever used against the grain on the neck right in this area because it grows a little wonky that I didn't cut myself, um, that it wasn't uncomfortable, that it didn't hurt. Uh, there are razors still to this day that I hesitate to go against the grain right there on the spot of my neck because it is such a tricky uh, place to get to. And the Prismatic can cut through days of growth. I'm talking months of growth. Uh, no other razor in my den can do that other than my Shavettes or my Straits. And even then, uh, they struggle a little bit more and they're not as smooth as the Prismatic for me. Now, the Prismatic is excellent when paired with the Astra superior platinum blades i love these blades they've been my pretty much my go-to blade for a long time you guys have seen that i've been experimenting with different uh, blade combinations and razors um, with varying results and so far i've been very impressed but still my go-to's the ones that i know i typically can rely on for anything are going to be my astra superior platinum blades they just they, they feel incredibly efficient whatever razor i put them in super smooth they just feel great so prismatic paired with an astro superior platinum those are my choices and again that's going to surprise you guys because i talk up the carbon i talk up the haircut and shave company razor i talk up my rock nail sailor expensive razors right well one of the reasons why i go to the prismatic is because the prismatic 
gives me a couple things. It's one of the most comfortable out of all the razors that I own. And what I've found is I like a balance between efficiency and comfort, but if I have to pick one or the other, I go on the side of comfort. I don't mind multiple passes. I love shaving. So if I have to shave in the morning and in the evening, to me two shaves, that, that's where that whole thing came from, um, then I don't care. I love an excuse to shave. So, and nowadays I primarily shave with the grain or across the grain anyway. I don't go against the grain um, unless it's here on my neck or little spots here and there on my face. But uh, the Prismatic has never let me down. No matter what blade I put in, um, no matter what situation or what handle I pair it with, that's the nice thing about this head, is that it works with any of my handles. So I pair it all the time with varying you know, handle combinations to get that shave that I want. Um, but it's just a really, really good, efficient razor that has great audio feedback. And I, I like ASMR, I personally do, you may not. Um, that's one of the reasons why I like the Haircut and Shave Company, N075, is because it's got wonderful feedback. Honestly, it was neck and neck between these two. I love my carbon, but this is more comfortable on a consistent basis with varying blades. Um, and I love the aluminum base plate on this. So these two, neck and neck. Um, honestly, if I could, I'd just put them both off to the side in the same same spot. But if I had to, had to choose, this edges it out a little bit because it's got a little bit more audio feedback. And this can cut through months worth of growth in a single pass. This one cannot. It chokes up along with very, you know all of my other DEs. And I attribute that large in part due to this massive gap. Um, it just seems to pass everything through without a problem. Love my prismatic. The brush, this will surprise a lot of you guys too. The Simon uh, Heritage Collection 77-4. I don't know if you can see that with the light, but at least you can see the translucent handle. Beautiful brush by Heritage Collection. An homage to the original Simon. And I hadn't used this handle in a while uh, because the knot on there was just too big. It would, because of the size of the handle, it would cramp my hand anytime I was really trying to press down on the knot to get the shave that I wanted to get the splay that I needed. And so I was like, you know what? I want to replace knots. And so I had this wonderful uh, Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements um, hybrid Nexus synth knot and the rest is history. It's, in, it's super soft and it's got enough springiness to kind of push back against you when you're doing, you know, you're pushing down on it for the splay, but not enough to make it uncomfortable. And this is the softest synthetic knot by far that I own. Um, the plus soft is close, but this is the softest for sure. So if you're looking for just something that's purely super soft, look at the Nexus. And you're looking for excellent vintage homage handles, look at the Simon. Now this was a difficult decision between this and the Double Duck. So two Heritage Collection brushes for the top spot in my den, and then I would say it's probably the Wee Scott Simpson. But I love the Simon handle. It's comfortable, it looks beautiful. With this knot, it still has that vintage look, like if it was a bore knot. Of course, this is nothing like a bore knot, but it's got that same look, that same inspired feel. A little bit of the modern with some of that old school vintage nostalgia, which that's what drives a lot of my shave is that nostalgic touch. Really like that. Now, when I first started in the hobby, I started off with a, a box full of random artis artisanal soaps. Um, when I first got into the artisanal aspect of wet shaving, I should say, um, there was someone I met locally who was willing to sell me a soap, and then he's like, you know what, I've got a bunch of other soaps I'm not using. Um, I'll sell these to you for just a little bit more. And it was a super cheap price for all of these soaps and aftershaves, so I'm like, oh hell yeah, I'll take all of them. So I did, and in that box was Sterling, a couple different Sterlings, as a matter of fact. And that launched me on the Sterling train, and it has maintained its pace to this day. Um, I don't buy a lot of software nowadays. Occasionally I do to support my artisans, and just because I'm interested. Um, but one of the few that I like to keep thinking about going back to and buying more of is Sterling, and my favorite right now soap is Sterling Almond Cream. And it was a tie between Almond Cream and Pumpkin Spice um, and Christmas Eve. So it was a three-way tie between three Sterling products. I like Sterling because they're consistent. 
I know the lather that I'm going to get from these products, and I love that lather. It just, it, it works wonders. It never lets me down. It does exactly what I want it to do um, without any fuss, without any trouble whatsoever. Um, and I love Sterling as an artisan, not only because of their business practices and their just transparency to their customer base, but because of the choices. If you want almond cream in a soap, they've got it in a splash, they've got it I think in a beard oil, um, they've got it in uh, like a body butter, they've got it in all sorts of different kinds of products so you can really layer up on that scent. And almond cream is one of those that I, <laughs> I find myself wanting to keep going back to over and over again because it's this rich marzipan almond cherry scent that's delicious, you want to bite into it, it smells divine. Um, it's just one of those that just makes me happy. It makes me feel good. There are other soaps that may make me feel you know, like sexy or may make me feel masculine or confident, um, but this one makes me feel good. Uh, same with Christmas Eve, same with pumpkin spice. Christmas Eve and pumpkin spice emulate for me my favorite time of the year, which is the fall and winter. Um, I love the smells, I love the the memories and the times I build during that time of the year. And so that's why it was kind of a three-way tie, but almond cream. And I love Sterling again because there's variety. There's so much variety and I can get it in a base that I know and I understand and that I appreciate. So let's keep moving forward. So the final one, and this is going to surprise you because I rarely use it. Um, <laughs> is Atomic Age Bay Rum by Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements. Now, when I first started my wet shaving hobby with that box of random artisanal soaps and splashes, none of it in there belonged to PAA. But what was in there was a Sterling Bay Rum that I thought smelled wonderful that Tiff and I both really, really liked. And so we're like, you need to get more Bay Rums. And this was my first exposure to Bay Rum, had never heard of it, didn't know what it was. Um, and so I'm like, let's look around and see who has the best Bay Rum. And so one of my very first artisanal purchases directly from an artisan, and definitely my first one from Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements, was Atomic Age Bay Rum. I loved this mason jar, really, really liked that design. It actually led me early on in my wet shaving journey to go look around for other mason jars, and this is the Colonel Conk. A white lightning mason jar that I found at an antique shop and that actually started my relationship and correspondence with Colonel Conk so you never know where your antiquing is going to take you um, but Atomic Age Bay Rum I get tons of compliments on this stuff I love the process that's involved on making this particular product the presentation spot on um, I like anything that has kind of a nostalgic feel or is a little bit different I like ceramic containers um, I like mason jars, cool bottles, you, you get the picture. But this one just, it lasts all day long, it's really strong, it smells great, um, and Tiff absolutely loves this scent, absolutely loves it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the shave. So let's re-wet the face since I've been chatting like crazy tonight. And I've got a little mirror down here in the corner. So that way I can see what I'm doing. Now you guys can probably see I have a lot of growth here. I am not shaving all that off today. I'm in the process of growing my beard back, but I will be shaving some of it. Good Lord, it smells wonderful. Now the nice thing about synthetics that I also like is that you don't have to pre-soak them, but that's also part of the fun process. I have no problem with pre-soaking my, my knots, my badger, or anything like that. Um, and I have tons of brushes, so it probably comes to a surprise to you guys that I might pick something like this when I've got tons to choose from. Uh, but I love the nostalgic aspect of this handle, and I love the way that the knot feels and how flexible it is as far as the u utility of it. Um, you know, whether that's a face lather or whether that's in a, in a bowl, um, there's a lot that I can do with it. And right now, guys, I'm just loading it up. Nothing too crazy. 15 second load time-ish. That's plenty. 
So what I do is I'm actually using another product that was my first entry into Scuttles. Um, it's not necessarily my favorite, but it's one that I love to use and it's my um, Crown King Travel Scuttle. The, or yeah, the Crown King Travel Scuttle. He's revamping these, so there will be a new design soon, I think with a wider mouth, which is one of my only complaints against this particular um, scuttle. But it whips up a really good lather in no time. And I don't know if with that light you're even able to see um, what the lather is going to look like. But I love how Sterling lathers because it takes no time at all to get the lather that you want, to get a usable lather. Some soaps require more water and you really have to dial it in. Some require a lot less and you can drown it easily. Um, Sterling has a great threshold for a lather, so it's great for seasoned wet shavers. It's great for beginners uh, that are just trying to get their feet wet in the hobby because they've got tons of choices. You can spend years going through the Sterling catalog and not be any closer to experiencing all that they have to offer. So that's one of the reasons I really, really like that product. Okay, got ourselves a nice creamy lather here. And I'll go ahead and wet the whole face or lather the whole face. Except for the upper lip, I'm not gonna do anything with the upper lip today. But again, nice, very consistent lather results every single time. I just love it. Always dense, feels great. Not an overabundance of cushion, so you don't have a lot blocking your blade from your face. I'm one of those that doesn't, like, I don't need tons of cushion, but this can produce layers upon layers of lather if you want it to. It's very flexible like that. Go ahead and put in my blade. Now, one of the only things I don't like about the Astra Superior Platinum Blades is that they do kind of have, to keep the protective packaging on there, they have, like, little little sticky areas to keep it on there. That's always drives me nuts. No matter what, always drives me nuts. Um, some blades don't do that. Astras do. But again, it's, it's a minor nitpick. And kind of the same with the Prismatic as well. One of my only nitpicks, and it's a weird nitpick, but I am not the craziest fan of zinc alloy. Even though this is nickel plated, even though it's well protected, I've never had any problems with it. Um, I prefer more premium materials, whether that's aluminum, stainless steel, brass, etc. You guys get the picture. But there's no way you guys aren't hearing that. The feedback on this razor is, it really hits the sweet spot for me. And it feels wonderful in the face. And again, I'm not doing anything too crazy because I am trying to grow my beard back. But thankfully, though it's incredibly comfortable, you still feel the blade a little bit and you definitely hear it. So you know where the blade is at all times during the shave, which to me is a really nice feature. You want comfort but you also want accuracy of where that blade is going. And you can see that it allows me to make nice straight lines on my face. And I think it's very obvious to you guys that I do a lot of blade buffing kind of obsessive like that.
And again, the neck is the one of the few places that I actually do go against the grain. Prismatic, beautiful for going against the grain. And again, don't be discouraged if you use a razor or you find something that you really like that doesn't work with the blade on the first try. Blades on first use are notoriously known for being a little bit more rough on that first go with the blade. And your face actually acts kind of like a strop where it kind of hones out any of the burrs or issues with the edges of your blade on that first go. Or at least that appears to be the general consensus. Now I am debating on just doing this like I had done before or letting it grow out. I think I'm going to allow this to kind of come in a little bit and then I'll make my decision later. I know so many of you are crying like, God, no, please, I want to see you shave more. I'm sorry, you sickos, you got to wait. Just kidding. But I mean, there is nothing to this shave. And one of the reasons, again, why I like that prismatic is it's incredibly accurate. So whether I have a lot of shaving space that I want to take care of, or if I just want to be super accurate, it allows me that flexibility. It's one of the reasons why I like the Wee Scott as a brush, is it's incredibly accurate. And it's great for those of you that have beards, where you just want to apply lather on certain parts of your face. Maybe you don't want to lather the whole face like I do. But I like the experience of building a lather. I like the fun. If you're not having fun while wet shaving, then why not just use a cartridge razor? You know, what's what's the point? So, oh, <laughs> I almost tried to use white lightning. They're almost identical. Now, one of the things that I will say that's unique about these mason jars, and it's the same thing with the white lightning. I don't know if you guys can see it, but on the bottom there, there's a ring of brown. And it's almost like the aftershave kind of starts to bleed through the bottom a little bit over a extended period of time of course but and all it takes is a little bit and you just use your finger as a restrictor on these bottles though they do come with restrictors oh man that smells good I'm telling you guys a little bit of cherry almond marzipan mixed with bay rum is a win. Doug, if you're watching this and you ever think about making a bay rum with some cherry in there, some marzipan almond, hit your boy up. <laughs> it really does smell excellent. And the cool thing was about this cap is they come with uh, candle wax on there to kind of close everything in. But he sends you two replacement caps to put on there. But I managed to weasel it off to where I've been able to keep that same look and feel to this day. So it's pretty cool. But guys, that was my 11111. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tag a few other guys in this video. So go ahead and look in the comment section, or not the comment section, but the description of this video below to see if you've been tagged. I'll mention a few off the cuff right now. Yosta Coast and John over at Latherhog. You guys have been tagged on this video. I challenge you to go ahead and list out your, you know, like one, 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 one of your den and just kind of what you would use. Now, again, guys, you don't have to create these videos. This is just kind of a fun exercise to keep it going. If you've already been tagged, then you know, um, but it's just fun. I just enjoy it. Uh, no pressure to do it, but hey, and if any of you other guys want to go ahead and do a video like this, don't wait to be tagged, do it. And you can tag me in those videos and say, hey, come over here and look at my video and see what I posted. And I'd love to come over there and see what you guys are creating. So don't hesitate to share your links in the comment section. That doesn't bother me at all. I want to share the good news of what we're doing here. Be a wet shaving evangelist, you know. <laughs> but anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you were surprised by my selections um, because what I show you guys, what I discuss, um, can be sometimes different than what I might choose individually for myself. And that's often because I'm getting a lot of new product in, things that I want to showcase while I have them, or things that I showcase because I just got them. 
Um, so I don't always have time to revert back to some of the old school classics, some of the, my favorites in my den. Um, so I think you guys are gonna like it, but let me know in the comments below if you like this kind of material, if you like the adjusted, you know, way that I'm, you know, showing my content here in the den, um, or what suggestions you might have. Thank you guys again, and I'll see you next time here on The Shaving Tolson. Peace.